Summer, here we come. With a little help from Superdrug. Receive £5 worth of health and beauty card points when you spend £20 on hair care, in store or online. Don't have a health and beauty card? Download the Superdrug app to get a digital card and enjoy this offer along with some amazing other benefits. Hurry, get £5 worth of points when you spend £20 on hair care today. Offer ends 10th of August. Terms and conditions apply. I can't remember what it was. It was something to do with All Stars Racing, I think. And they were putting... Well, that was it. They were doing a bunch of screenshots to put out. And, and like a press and the press release and a bunch of screenshots. So I said, I said look, can I see it in advance? And they're like, yeah, sure. Because you know I said, because you know what generally happens. Somebody's missed something. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, I go through everything. It's like, I looked at the screenshots. Because they never check the screenshot. They just, they just say, give me screenshots. Yeah. And... Um, Ryu, mm-hmm. whatever his name is, um, from Shenmue, mm. was he, uh, right? he was visible clearly in one of the screenshots, and we hadn't announced him yet. And we were building up to do a big, a big reveal. So I'm just like, uh. and from that point on, they just went, oh, let's just run it past Kevin from now on. Hey guys, it's Jamie J Eggman, and you're listening to the Opinion Zone. I do have a snoring dog in the background, so don't be overwhelmed if you hear that. That isn't me. That would not make sense because I'm talking at the same time. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm starting a new series today, and I wanted uh, to uh, basically tell you a bit about it before we go straight into it. It's called Sonic Boomers, and basically it's an opportunity for me to chat to friends and peers and just people I've known on the Sonic community who were around all the way back to when I started uh, being interested in the online Sonic fandom. We're talking like before Shadow the Hedgehog came out on the GameCube and the PlayStation 2, like way, way back, and it's just not to talk about them, how they got interested in Sonic, what made them join the online community and become like let's be honest one of the trailblazers because a lot of these people were doing this this stuff for the first time because it didn't exist before then and uh what it's led to in their lives professionally and personally and how they got to the point they're at now why am i calling it sonic boomers one because i appreciate a sonic pun and two because the fact that i've noticed that anyone who approaches the age of 30 in the online sonic community it's basically considered a boomer. Don't agree with it, but it's definitely an experience that I've been noticing. Um, so that's why I'm calling it that. The first person we're talking to today is the delightful Kevin Eva. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kevin uh, started one of the first uh, Sonic fan sites, Sonic Rex, which was a big name in its heyday, and uh, started one of the first Sonic podcasts, Radio Redux. And also, and this is what I found one of the most interesting parts of this chat, was he was one of the first people who went from being a Sonic fan to working professionally for Sega, because he did get a job working for Sega Europe as a community manager for Sonic, which was crazy. Like, it just, that just wasn't, it was didn't seem so, like now you see it all the time where people are crossing the boundaries. But like back then, he was one of the first. So we go into that. What were the high points? What were the low points? What were the struggles of doing something like that and breaking new ground in terms of what all that meant? So I do really, really hope you guys enjoy this chat. I really enjoyed the experience of getting to talk to my friend. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy. And uh, at the end, we'll go for his social. So make sure you do check him out on all of those. And if you do like it as you're listening, remember at any point, you can go to iTunes and give us five stars. Um, just a suggestion. But let's go and listen to the interview. And looking back, it's like that really was... A, it really does feel like an era of time. <laughs> That's part like that is a yeah, defined it, era with a beginning and an end. The era of community mm. there, which then stopped. It just it just stopped. 
It didn't fade away. It it stopped. stopped. <laughs> that was that when, was it. It's, it was weird. So I mean, I know when it started for me. Uh, I mean, for me, I sort of came in around. I want to say, sh- specifically the Y sticks in my head around Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> That's when I started being more invested in all this community stuff. And I didn't really kick. I didn't do anything actively myself until. Uh, Sonic A6. I think that's sort of around the time mm. I. But you, I, you, Sonic Rex was before that. But also, I didn't realise that Sonic Rex was a part of Kev's kingdom. <laughs> oh yeah, I had to, I had to um, leave the domain after about fifteen years, not that long ago. I had to give it up in the end. What like, was? I can't afford this. What was Kev's kingdom? Was it just a blog? Kev, or... Okay, Kev's kingdom forward slash geocities forward slash track forward slash eight four nine three because it was the one place on geocities where I could actually find a spot. It was just a place. Um, it was it was a bit like LMC now in that it was like a little like hub where I taught myself HTML oh. and the um, site just had a bunch of stuff. If, version one you can see it on the. Um, LMC history thing is absolutely awful, absolutely horrendous. <laughs> it's, it's but little, however young it was me back in 1996, seven. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, 13, 14 year old me who was just doing stuff on the computer because the internet was a thing then and came along. It was like, oh wow, you can create stuff on the internet and people can go there. And it was just a, a collection of things um like uh, so, like various sections like uh the barrel of monkeys which was just a whole heap of just you know parody stuff and you know written articles and uh, you know joke tv schedules and and uh, like uh, like, a, like a version of midsummer night's dream like but in like um computer speak so it was all like really stupid. It was, it was a whole heap of stuff. Um, there was Archangel, which is where the Archangel UK name came from, who was this ah. really dark, horrible character who lived in a basement and told really dark, horrible tales about his encounters with various people and basically how he killed them. It was... <laughs> I didn't realise it was that. It was, that. Like, it, it, it was always done in like a really, really sort of black humour way. Um, and a bunch of other stuff, and then eventually, uh, I I kept it going, and it was just a, a place where friends hung out. We just talked about our stuff, and it went to like version seven or whatever it was. And I was at university and bored out of my skull um, in the uh, uh, the, uh, the equivalent of the library or the IT center late at night, and I do mean late at night, mm-hmm. um, doing an all nighter on. Studio 3D Studio Max because I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was trying to make some sort of car in a out of yeah, just out of 3D, and I haven't had no skill in it whatsoever. And I remembered, I remembered Sonic, which sounds a bit weird, but okay. my initial connection to Sonic was you know way back when with you know watching the cartoon on Channel Four really more than anything my gosh yes i remember that in the early hours yeah yeah in in the in the early in the early hours like like recording it either being up really early or recording it on the, the vhs yeah before and then watching it after i did football practice and it was uh, i had a i had a game gear growing up that's literally it from the Sega console where so i had a, a game gear so i had sonic triple trouble oh. Which I loved, and Sonic Two, which I hated, <laughs> and the Game Gear version, horrible hang gliders. Say no more. Oh my gosh! But I went on to, I just set, I was, I, I was that bored, and I promised myself to do nothing. But I like, would take a break, so I was looking up various things, and I looked up Zelda, and I thought I think I got to like Zelda Power or the equivalent of Zelda Power back then, and then I looked up Sonic, and then I got to Sonic Stadium, and it was at the time they were doing the Sonic Sight Awards. Yes. Oh my gosh. So the Sonic Side Wars 2004. Yeah. And I listened to uh, a young Mr. Sven and Rory Jocelyn do like the award show and then went through like the various things because I, I found it really amazing that this actual online community had developed involving Sonic and it was it was so diverse. 
and that that really grabbed me and i started sort of taking note and going to all these sites and sonic rex directly came about from the sonic site awards and that's <laughs> and it's because i went to the sprite comic thing sprite comic award for that year mm. and i looked at it and i thought it was crap <laughs> I, I i really did I thought it, I was looking at this and going, "This is one. This isn't even any good. It, it's not funny. It's not, you know, with my limited Photoshop skills, I could do something better than that." And it's like I, that was the thing. I can, I could do better than that. Oh dear. <laughs> Thus, the path was set. That is very interesting to me because that very much is a similar story to how I got involved, which was that I saw content that was already out there then i saw some of it and was like i don't think this is good enough and i for some reason in my head was like i i could do that and i could probably do it not and not to put any of the content that was already out there down but it's just like oh i i just feel like there's a there is a there is a bar there's a a gap there there's a a chance elevate elevate this and make it better for the the people that are that are clearly keen to read and watch and write about it um because i found i mean i found something rich for two things but obviously it was one of them being the sprite comics um oh yeah you did for a long like that i remember that a, a long time because i mean that was the that was the thing about that that everyone took note of back in the day was that you had the fireball 20xl stuff yeah which was like yeah, three panel four panel that's it and there were, and most of the panels were the same and then you had sonic rex come along which is like okay well this is like you know six panels eight panels it's like a feature length story there's stuff going on it's like there's a battle and there's damage being done to the actual framework of the comic and stuff like that there's from the you know the the big ragnarok arc that happened um uh yeah it was it was kind of it was kind of crazy how much it happened but but sw was literally set up with the goal of winning the sonic site <laughs> that's right. I, I... That's right quick. within two years i set myself the target so it went on to uh, went as, as a part of Kev's Kingdom, and then got spun off into its own thing, and it sort of swallowed its, <laughs> it swallowed its father whole. <laughs> um, and during that era, you, you already mentioned um, Archangel UK, which then became sort of your handle, AA UK. Yeah, I guess more. I, I, I needed one. It turned out I needed one. Like like, like I needed a OC. This is the thing I was. I wanted to talk about this because that, that was very much an era where people didn't use their real like i mean obviously if you knew people yeah. you would know but like you had an al- everyone had an alias and in most cases those aliases would actually be tied to and uh, like their own character um it yeah. was like that was a rampant time for fan characters <laughs> yeah but um, people forget i mean people that people take you know the mickey out of you know ocs and that nowadays um, even though there's a lot of creators that still use OCs in, mm. in very great ways, uh, including some people of your association. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's... Uh, yeah, everyone had one. Everyone had one. And well, I, never, I, don't, I don't remember ever seeing a Jamie one. Well, I never had a... I had an alias, uh, but I didn't have a character. It's so, like, I was always... I don't know why, but during that whole time, I was very much known by Disco Ponies. <laughs> Um, hmm. But that wasn't tied to. For some reason, I didn't have a, a humanoid pony like with a DJ set, like um, which is missed opportunity. Probably looking back, uh, <laughs> but it was very. Bring just... back the pony show. <laughs> no, don't, don't oh, let that die. I remember. <laughs> uh, I'm glad not many people do. There's probably a lot of people even now. Like you tell me their first name, and it sort of springs a memory. But for a lot of them, if you mention their fan character name or the name they went by online that time that would trigger more of a memory i'd be like oh yeah, yeah so, so yeah I, I got in the habit a while back of um of, of, just, of, of just saying people's names i think it was around about the time when um i basically took a uk out the back of the barn and shot it <laughs> uh as a name and i just sort of like going like when we're on stream and I'm doing st- when I'm Twitch streaming, it's like most of the time I will say Phil and Josh and John, and I won't say Vija, Earthheart, Turbo, um, or anything like that. 
I mean, that's why I'm Kevin in, in this Discord call now. I'm Kevin Brackets LMC or I'm LMC Kevin, wherever I go. It's it, it just it, it felt like that time had passed. Yes, for anonymity because everyone knows anybody anyway. Everyone knows Mark Applies, Mark Fishback. You know, everyone yeah. knows Jack Septicus' real name is Sean. It, it, everyone knows. So what's the point? <laughs> It's definitely an era that's ended, I think. Um, no, yeah. you, like you, meant, you mentioned, there's something, even now, my good friend known online as Sonic Pox, who's like this big... Poxy! Yeah, Poxy, yeah. And I will always call him Poxy. How's the university going? Very well. That That's the thing that, honestly, about the community nowadays is the stuff I'm most engaged in. Bizarre. It's, I just, I love finding out how people are doing, like, professionally. I love that you know the the likes of Mark have been able to go on to to do official stuff. I love the fact that you know uh, Dean Simon Lee is you know, on the cusp mm. of, of it, one raid away from becoming a massive YouTuber, yeah, streamer. There's just so many people that are in the industry now. It's it's just it's great to see. You did something with X. Oh, I can't yes. not talk about Sonic Rex without talking about Radio Redux, though. Cause... Uh, you were... well, before we leave Rex, though, the, 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 the weird thing about Rex is that there was this strange, like, decade and a half circle, which, you know, a snake which ate its own tail with Rex, because Rex used the Ritz sprites from back in the day. Mm-hmm. And well, Ritz goes by another name nowadays, his real name, which is Tyson Hess. So there was, there was this weird thing at SOS 16 where Sven introduced me to Tyson and, Ty- and you know, and Tyson had no idea who I was and I had no idea who Tyson was. It was super awkward. <laughs> it was only after that that somebody mentioned, like, in passing, just like, oh, back when he did the Ritz stuff. It was like, no way. So you had this strange thing where I used something that Ritz created mm. to get into... Yeah, you know, to to start something, which then took me to Sega and, and and back out of again, and then something I created at Sega, um, he then brought to life in animation with the uh, wanted posters and generations. Yeah. So it was this 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 strange strange thing um, of you know creator creates something, other person utilizes that to create something, they create something, every first person uh, uses it to create something. I just thought that was neat. That is super neat, and I think it says a lot about, especially that era of the community, of how so much depth, so much talent. The, the amount of talent. I'm not saying there isn't. There is so much talent in the community like, of, of the younger generation, obviously. But like, and maybe it's because it was we didn't have social media in the same way, so I think it was a lot more condensed and focused um, to me. Uh, and it's just interesting to see those people and everyone who was of of clear talent in this in the sonic community you, you i feel like everyone knew those people you all knew each other in a certain way yeah and, it's so and, and then just out of the woodwork somewhere you'd find somebody else that you'd somehow missed well, and you'd just go wow a, a how have i missed this person and b look at this yeah. a friend of mine who did content uh did a series at the very early age of the sonic show called slingerland's corner uh, Brad Flick, um, like he yep, did all Brad's his content on us, and then big things. and then he's like, you know, he's on, working on Sonic Mania, and then I was looking through the credits of Sonic Mania, and I recognised another name, and he he at a random point created one of the Sonic Show theme tunes, like and it's just, and then there's a complete disconnect. He's then um, doing stuff uh, on Mania, and I'm like, yeah. it's just it's just like it, it's very pleasing, it's extremely pleasing. But while this is all going on, not only are you doing sprites comic. You're also oh, radio um, doing Radio Redux, which for me, it was very much a game changer in terms of um, Sonic media, fan media. Like, because there was, I mean, there was online radio, and some of it was podcasted, but a lot of it was more you can just download it if you find the right FTP server and yeah. download it from that. I mean, FTP servers, I can't believe Here's that. Here is a treasure map. <laughs> yeah. you, have 20 minutes, you have 20 minutes before the sun sets, you're not able to find anything. <laughs> and you're eaten by the crocodiles or something. Uh, and so Radio... And obviously, I, I, fell, I fell in love with Radio Redux as soon as I picked up because it was... It was that. It, you got to think, like, back then, 
this was not just it wasn't just new for the sonic community it was new for just entertainment because podcasts was so, like that was around the time that podcasts in a major way like itunes and stuff that was that was when it was around the same time when it was all kicking off yeah um it was it was legitimately and i know it's, it's said this during red Rex and it's easy to um you know sort of just you know, bs it a bit but no it legitimately was the the very first sonic related podcast on itunes yeah it was legitimately i think i mean the, the somewhere but it been like the top somewhere between the top 20 and 50 video game related podcasts that there were full stop mm-hmm. on itunes it was it it pushed a lot of boundaries in terms of what stuff you can do i mean you look at the nowadays it's i mean obviously it's freaking cringeworthy but um, even like Sonic X, uh, not Sonic X, um, Chaotix X. Yes. That was, you know, the, the whole idea of doing like a radio drama in the middle of stuff is you, now you've got like Sonic and Tails R, or whatever it's called, mm. which which does that and is, you know, a big, big thing. Um, but yeah, really, really, I just, I just love the idea of, again, there was, there was radio stuff out there. And I wasn't a part of any. <laughs> I simply wasn't a part uh, of any of those platforms, or really knew how to do that. And it wouldn't have worked for me broadcasting live. So I, I just recorded them and tried to make it a decent mix of you know music and news and discussion and the Sonic Rex slash me trademark brand of irreverence, and try to mix it in a way. Try to be open and accessible um which is why we had things like you know q a uk or the magnificent seven with demix you know just just have regular features that were a part of that that people could get involved in and that you didn't know where it was going to go but like just doing things like that 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 spearheads how everything's got like now if you set up if you're an influencer uh, gross web if you're an influencer and um you're um being told like this is what you need to do to engage or you're a marketing thing you need to, you, you, it, yeah. one of the things is like In- right you need engagement. to engagement you need to have engagement yeah which is like you need to have familiar segments so things that people will enjoy and come be able yeah. to come back to things or, that people can latch on to yeah and, and then also things that people can involve themselves in and then if they feel their part of the show and stuff and that you were doing that like back in <laughs> back in, like in two thousand, I, I am before my, I am cursed to be before my time. Uh, get, get no benefit out of it, and then move on. And then four years later, everyone's doing the same thing that I was suggesting or something. Um, it's it's one of those things I, so, I found. Like I have such affinity for Radio Redux. I think for obvious reasons, like it's one of the first things. I mean, you were one of the first places and radio redux was one of those venues that gave me a shout out in terms of what i was doing you were one of the first places to acknowledge that we existed um yeah well that was that was again looking around the community and you know there were folks that were doing some great work i continue to say that zone zero was one of the best sonic sites has ever been mm-hmm. um and barely 10 percent of the community probably knows about it uh, but just from an archival point of view, they were they were light years in at the time. With uh, with Sonic Show, with what you were doing, it was a case of, hey, that's the next step. That's the next step from audio. It's exactly the same as you know the next step from from radio, where it's just, oh yes, you're using sound to tell a picture. Was well, let's actually have the picture. Yeah. Um. You you latched onto you know was it YouTube back then? was it daily motion first or something i we i think we we hosted it ourselves i think at the very beginning it was was it like flash video or something it was flash video players and i think yeah flash video player rest in peace this was back when you could have a video podcast and it was like you could have it on itunes and play it on your ipod video if you were fancy enough to have one of those Mm. um or play it on the built-in itunes player and that was easy because it was hidden otherwise it was like find it in this hidden treasure map of the ftp server um but again you were you were you were taking it into places being damn entertaining as well but you were taking it to places where you know in hindsight it's obvious where it it should have gone but 
you were the one who was going, hey, look at this. We could, it was not just, you know, look at what I can do. It was like, look at what we can do. Look yeah. at what we can all do. Yeah. And that was like super important. And you were, and still to this day, are an absolute master at creating a community around you. TikTok sweets boy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to know that. But you've got um, you've got that you've got that about you, and it was it was so good, and not many people were taking notice at the time, and it just made sense. Just go, go look, look, for those people that vaguely paid attention to me, look. Yeah, and I think and like we did a uh, for those of you who are listening who don't even know the Sonic Show um, or any of what we're talking about, um, when it, we were back then. Uh, it was like a long format video show that I did and um, it had seasons and I want to say it was still within the first season so in the, within like the first like 10 or so episodes I think it was episode 7 specifically I don't know why that stuck in my head um, we did a crossover episode um, we did like yeah. a radio redux uh, slash the Sonic show thing and to, I remember at that point doing that and in my head I was like oh I've made the big time now <laughs> it's like this is this is it. Um, I have such fun memories of that time, and like, it, and that was a time when like Mario and Sonic were getting together for the first time in a game, um, things like that. And we didn't know mm. it was, you know. Well, that was that was my that was my first day at Sega. Oh, my, you... my first my first my, my literal first day at Sega, um, when I went there to do Sonic City, mm. um, was the six weeks of can you make Sonic City not suck um i i went in there and there was like oh excellent i'm glad we can come to an agreement could you come through here please and i was like well, i was literally like i was literally sat down in an office asked to sign this nda immediately and i was like okay can i read it i guess like, yes, you can read it, but we really recommend hurrying up I was like, okay so sign so looks for it signed it and it's like excellent um we're announcing mario and sonic in like 10 minutes <laughs> here's a computer can you please go on the? Here's a computer. We'll log you in. Can you just moderate the Sega forum while we do this announcement? Right. It's like, yeah, sure. You're sure. And it's like, hey, wait. What do you mean you do Barrio and Sonic? Oh yeah, it's at the, it's at the Olympics. Why at the Olympics? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? I think that was everyone's initial reaction. And to yes, be fair, that was everyone's initial reaction. To, to and... this day, it's still, I think, the reaction. <laughs> that reaction. Yeah. Ever but changed. at the same time with, with wiser heads we can see that it was it was you know the the best way to have the pair of them was effectively a neutral venue and that just randomly happened to be the olympics, the olympics. Um, also it made so an absolute monster amount of money so yeah it didn't didn't hurt anyone did it so back to radio redux uh no radio sonic rex the other thing i want to uh, discuss is the shadow yeah. depository because the show depository the thing that got me the most in trouble <laughs> with 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 say sega were really bizarrely um their reaction to that was, was really bizarre but to, to explain to people what the show depository was which then just became the depository later on yeah um the show depository itself was just a, was a pun on something from farscape <laughs> Um, actually, there was, a, there, was a, there was a shadow depository in that, which was basically a, a, a criminal bank. And I loved the idea that, that this website, technically about shadow, we just call it that, mm. um, for, for the lols. But yeah, depository was just there for uh, like a collection of like of just you know, media, official art, wallpapers and things. Because even at that time, some of those older sites that are talking about with, in wistful tones nowadays by the, the older folks long since mm. gone they were starting to die off and we were starting to lose some of that ability to get the media um this is a, a time before sonic mickey air and everything else which you know this is the thing i want to stress to everyone listening is what because what we're describing is basically this is an archive of media of content yeah of it, was things. An archive, like, it was an archive that, of media you and you need to really appreciate that the time that this was around this wasn't a thing there's like just this no. What, what it seems like such a commonplace idea now, like everything's archived and everything, like even stuff about my, my part, like I can, I can, I can find out everything I did in the last like twenty years, even if I didn't realize I consented to it. But like at that time, especially for like uh, commercial media, like 
if you were a fan and you wanted to check something like it just those sort of things didn't exist and these things were that's why these sort of um deposit yeah. also were so those important. Type of things were just deemed very throwaway yeah but that we know are nowadays because anytime any other piece of old art or something comes out is is treated you know as this creative gem because the community specifically the sonic community has always been mm. very you know whilst they've not maybe not necessarily like the games or so they they have appreciated the creative process yes in it they've always they've always appreciated you know the, the craft that's gone into the music and the craft that's gone into you know making these cutscene videos or you know the voice actors mm -hmm. um there was a lot people of the sonic community has been obsessing over voice actors and this is somewhat more prevalent in recent times obviously with um roger yeah. uh, going and then coming back, back at the time of recording uh, but the, the Sonic community been obsessing over the voice actor cast for decades, <laughs> you know, even when there wasn't really much of a voice, they, they obsess about the design. They they love going into absolutely everything. I was I saw a tweet this morning, which was going into you know, the design of Sonic. And they, they, they pause the design of Sonic on this new trailer for you know whatever this game might be that's totally not you know Sonic Rangers. Um, <laughs> But they they paused it, and they said, "Look, look, Sonic's quills are a lot longer in this design." And people go, "Oh, you mm. know," and people like go about the, the the design of the shoes and and things like that. It's uh, but and you know, how the trailer was put together, as much as you know, the usual frame by frame analysis yeah. <laughs> of everything. So we needed somewhere for that to be, and. You know, TS has had a place, but it, you know, it wasn't. It was. It was the thing that kind of got left behind a lot, and was again one of those places where you need to know the link really yeah. more than anything else. And it was more behind the scenes. Radio Sega was you know, around at that time, but you couldn't, you know, download anything, and it was only just audio. Uh, Retro was getting more on the case, but they were still very much, you know, a. a a wiki yeah. and their earlier version of the wiki was nowhere near the level that it is nowadays so i just like the idea of just, just having this thing and just, just people having access to it and that gained a, a lot of fans because i was able to hunt down stuff i was very, very good at hunting down stuff and i started to put together bizarre as it seems like a network <laughs> a network of agents <laughs> who were able <laughs> to find stuff and would send stuff to me, and I'd say, could you have a look at you know, an eye out for this? And they'd go, certainly. And they'd maybe come back in like six months and go, you never guess what I found. And, you know, I wouldn't remember. Plus, you know, who are you? But <laughs> but uh, there was, you know, people would send stuff to me. We started collating it in the in the depository. And, you know, but it was it was everything. Sounds, fonts. Back in the day when you couldn't get the yeah. Sonic font. Like, yeah. It's... Nisa Sega Sonic. You couldn't get it anywhere. Um, and it just became that the depository was such a was, a was a great place to the point, to the point where at one it was been two thousand eight, late two thousand eight, the head of Sega Europe's creative services department comes to me and goes because Sega were, were terrible at their archive, absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. um, Fans have been mortified. I mean, this is why they like they lost like the code for Sonic One and things like this. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Um, but they had like, discs and discs and discs and discs of the media, which wasn't you know organised in any way, shape, or form. And they're just like, and she came to me and said, well, um, like, have you got the art for this? And I, I think it was something to do with Heroes, right? Uh, or do you know? Do you know where you can get the art for the, the, or, or this art? And she showed or showed me like a poster, and I was like, ah, that render is from blank, blankety, blank, blank, blank. And she looked to be like, how do you know this? I was like, I'm a fan. I, I care about this stuff. And there's this place you can go where you can get all this stuff. Is there? And I showed her the, the depository. And it's like, you do this? And it's like, yeah, because because I put it by character. And she's like, this is amazing. <laughs> and. Sonic Rex's Shadow Depository became the place where Sega Europe got all of their stuff, all of their archive stuff. I started getting requests from Sega Europe for stuff to go on the depository. 
which was That's really funny. weird. And America used it too, and even Japan used it. That was the that was the the real funny thing when I was looking at the yeah the the analytics the statistics yeah. one day and just I'm like it was like Sega Japan address like downloading some very key Sonic assets. It was like <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I feel like that's still their probably their approach to this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it, it, was, it was just so funny. But it, it was so time-consuming. It really, really was. There was no quick way of doing it. There was nothing that generated all the pages. It was you know me going through and manually making, manually coding the tables and manually putting the links in and everything. It was just this is the thing. Oh, I think people need to appreciate as well that this is also a time where where I feel like now. Uh, anyone can build a website or i mean to be fair a lot of people don't need a website but like back then like you a lot of the stuff that was done you knew had to like do yourself but despite all that like you did radio redux which we, as we said was like a, a, a really was a first in terms of podcasting and sonic podcasting mm -hmm. really something you can shadow depository which again you know on the scale that it was was a first you know it was really a, it was a, a change in the way that fan sites can be used i still and... get bitched bitching about it like where is it like, where is it why can't i get where? this anymore like give over <laughs> why don't we take a quick break and then when we come back we can discuss one of the other things you were one of the first people to do which was working at sega in business Days don't just come and go. Every day counts. Whatever your day brings, with Comcast Business, you'll have the solutions you need to make the most of it. Like the power of the network that can deliver gig speeds to the most businesses. The freedom to control your network from anywhere. And advanced cybersecurity to help protect every device on it. Every day in business is a big day. We'll keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary. Call for details. But I, one of the other things that I, you were one of the first of was one of the first examples of members of the community moving into an official capacity in Sonic. Um, yeah. Um, and, and I really was... want to know how that came about. Right. So Cause... there's there's two, there's a, a few things here. Um, so it that sort of era, and again, they're in this strange strange land compared to wherever it was now that the, the the fans are now the creators for a lot of stuff because you've got you know um christian and evan and people that know at the time i mean ian Flynn was from the fan base you know the under the, the potto name yeah, he yeah. was from the fan base um and there was and then there was me and I came in because entirely because of <laughs> Sonic Rush Adventure, uh, and one of those things that we actually talked about before we officially started recording, which was uh, Sega's unerring ability to to leak stuff via you know obvious file names and things in the code of websites and and what have you, or just not paying attention to what they're. A lot of oversight. What they're actually putting out. Lack of oversight, again. Yeah, lack of oversight. So I was... Uh, the Sonic community team... Uh, the like Europe community team, as was, uh, had not long been formed. And the, the first Sonic community manager, which was Romley Broad, uh, good old Rom, he went and started you know, just trying to reach out to places because you know he wasn't really familiar with, with Sonic... Mm. It, it landed the flagship brand and goodness he was at least going to have a look and so we started having a chat back and forth um there was uh shadow of the hedgehog day on sonic stadium and that was like the first sort of cross promotional type thing that occurred i remember that um see the uh see the wondrous uh the wondrous archive volume history of summer of sonic on youtube for more details and he so he started reaching out to people and we started getting a little bit of back and forth and Sven 
I spoke to Sven first, and then Sven basically went, look, there's these people, this people, this people, this people, this people. Um, what Sven didn't know was that Rom had already reached out to me. So Rom already knew who I was. Yeah. And there was a leak of Marine the Raccoon from Sonic Rush Adventure. Right. And Sonic Yoda, Lewis Clark. Yes, legend. Um, of the old Sonic Yoda website, which of course is now and days Sega driven. Yes. He had, he found it and put it up and just went, look, there's this art. But because of back in the day, Sonic Yoda wasn't, was one of those sites that not many people went to. And, and it actually, whilst a few people in the know knew, it kind of hadn't gone anywhere from there, but it was only a matter of time. Yes. And so I knew and Sven knew and Ron knew. And there was this, uh, Ron was asking around and I said to him, look, I know Sonic Yoda from some of the community events that, we, that we've done, the, the early, early community events that mm. we did. And I said, do you want me to speak to him? And he said, oh, would you? Said, yeah, sure. And I said, look, you'd, you'd probably take it down if you asked, but you'll want, you know, make, please, can you arrange something? For Sonic Yoda, so they because you know it's not their fault that they found something that you, you guys screwed up yeah. with. So I basically went to I initially went before we did anything. I went to bat for Sonic Yoda to to go, hey, can they get something in return for and if they do this? And they went, yes, we'll arrange something. I think it was like an exclusive interview in the end, which was good because that's kind of what I was angling for. Uh, and then I basically just negotiated it down. I negotiated a a leaked asset being taken down, um, which uh, which I basically just went to Lewis that you know could you do this and I'm sort of asking on behalf of them. Yeah. But then they owe you, and also you've now you've now become a contact with them. Yes. By this, so um, and that's that's how that happened. Um, much later on, then they asked me about coming in and fixing up Sonic City, which. Um, was a, a, a different task in itself because I was given like, like I say, I think it was six weeks. I was done with my bit, six weeks or four weeks. I think it might've been four weeks actually. Um, it was come in, fix up all the text and they gave me four weeks. I was done after two and they weren't ready. <laughs> yeah. So I did all the stuff, like a whole bunch of expansion things. And then it was up to them to get to have the extra code ready and they weren't ready so i had to then go away for like six months and then come back after that for another six months <laughs> it, it was a ridiculous amount of time ridiculous, it took them that long to get stuff up and running um but there was a lot of um political stuff with that because one of the things that people re right back at the beginning where people found out that a fan was working for for sega mm. um it didn't go down well there, a, a lot of people didn't like that within the community. Um, a, a little bit of it was jealousy. A little bit of it was, you know, who's this guy? A little bit was was that we don't want the, the don't want our opinions <laughs> affecting the brand so much. So one of the old things that I always remember is um, tales. Tales's profile had a whole bunch of facts on it, and. The problem was that they would all been approved by Sonic Team, even the ones that were wrong. So it's very difficult to oh, argue no. against Sonic Team having something wrong. Um, it didn't set me in good standing from the get go. <laughs> so the thing that they had on there was the, uh, I think you'll probably remember this. It was like the, the myth that in Sonic X in the Spanish dub, Tails was a girl. I seem to remember that. And that was on Sonic City as one of the facts. Fake news before it was such. <laughs> before that horrible term. And, and I was like, this is wrong. Can I take this down? And it's like, well, Sonic Team have approved it. Well, it's wrong. But they've approved it. So it must be true. It really isn't. And there was like a whole back and forth. And in the end, with a whole bunch of that stuff, I just <laughs> I just took it down anyway. Because yeah. they weren't paying much attention. So I, was like, I took it down anyway. But I, I got I got blamed for that. It was like a lot. Of, there was a, a bunch of people that, that blamed me for that text being there, and it was like, no, this is all the original stuff. It's like, oh no, look at this guy he's putting in like fan theories and stuff. It's like, oh god, what have I got myself into here? It's it's interesting because it very much shows. I mean, I don't think fans have changed necessarily when new things come along. I think I think you're right that they're. 
I think there was probably a few people where it stemmed from a, a bit of jealousy in terms of like, why, yeah, why them and not us? Yeah, um, it's it's just, there, there was a few things over the years that were like, wow, <laughs> you know, it was like there was um one of the Sega sites, um, but a while the guys there really hated me, and there was a lot of stuff that came out because a lot of stuff that came out because I was friends with Lee. Bentley, which and there was a number of comments which were frankly homophobic. <laughs> yes, I can um, imagine. Uh, which is, you know, very unlike the Sonic fan base. I've always been very proud of the fact that they seem extremely tolerant and always have been long before then it became like a. I would say, yeah, an extremely diverse so. fan base. But yeah, there was. Yeah, but there were there were days. There were, there were there were legitimately days where I was wondering what the heck I'd gotten into. How did was there ever any conflict with you? Because from my recollection, during your whole time in Sega Europe, Sonic Rex still going on, um, you know, and you, it, I don't remember you taking a huge step back from any of it. Was there ever? A, I mean, there might not have been, but I feel like that would have caused some conflict, whether it be from every other Sega, day. yeah. Every other day. Was that from um, Sega's that... end or fans' end or both? Sega. Um, so... There was a, a strange thing. We mentioned Radio Redux. One of the things that, that Radio Redux stopped, that became at one point was the unofficial official Sonic podcast. Mm. And that I was asked to like, put up a bunch of news for that. And the, um, the 2010 voice acting change for Colours uh, and that era of games... Yeah. The big thing came out was the other idea was because I made the comment of it being like a, a I was franchised. I made the, 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 there was news coming, and I was like, "Oh, it's franchise changing," um, and I did it. I said it in such a like a you know very obviously this is not way, and then it became front page news on Sonic Stadium. That, that, according to this official source, Radio Redux, <laughs> AUK confirms franchise changing news coming up, and I was looked at that and I went, "Fuck, father boy." So then, no, it wasn't him. It was it was Shadza. It was Shadza. It wasn't uh, Dave. You're Dave. You're innocent. It was it was Shadza. But then that sounds like Sega. The fact that you did yeah. have this podcast but and this fan site. It there was, was Sega there was this weird. There was this very weird atmosphere at my time at Sega. I didn't think much of it at the time, but since then, as you get because you, you're all sort of surrounded by this this dream. You know, you're surrounded by this. This wondrous creative process and you know being involved in that and you know the honor of being involved in that. Mm. But over the years I've become a little bit more cognizant of the fact that whoa, that was out of line. And you know, that was you know, that was um the word gaslighting didn't exist back then, but there was a heck of a lot of it. With Sega You've got this thing where you've hired me as a fan doing a fan site because they're a fan doing a fan site to fill this position. And mm. the reason I got in there was because somebody left and it was an opportunity to, for, to get me in the team. And I'm eternally grateful to James Shaw for that, um, who's now gone off to head secret mode. Check them out. They're the new studio that's coming in uh, by Sumo. Mm. And... Uh, they're going to be doing like the, all the, the publishing, not the publishing stuff, but the like the marketing and everything else for like like jewels and jewels in the rough, diamonds in the rough mm-hmm. type games. And one of the things that I kept bumping into constantly was the fact that I was a fan, and the idea that I cared about the project, the product the brand and what the fans thought of it which is you know my job yeah that really rubbed some people the wrong way people didn't understand that there was a lot of people that uh, sad sad, there was a lot of people in that area who really didn't care it was a lot more corporate back then there's not there was very little understanding and what my four years there were pretty much doing was just educating people over and over and over again which is why when we got to 2011 and generations we had you know, a lot more stuff that we could do. There was fan involvement, although they didn't even know it. Um, we were in that position that yeah. was built up. But so, Sega had this thing where it, it was literally you know, bipolar, and that's not 
for, for want of a better phrase, obviously, it's one of better. They were absolutely bipolar about me and Sonic Rex existing. Yes. One day they needed Sonic Rex to do something, or they needed me to do that as a fan. The next day, it's what do you know? You're a fan, and the word that kept coming up over those four years was passion. And whenever somebody said said, "Oh yeah, we we acknowledge your passion," what they were actually was doing was like kind of putting down. Thing. it became passion became their byword for oh kevin's you know bless him you know, worked up and excited about stuff again yeah he's worked up and excited, but again because there's so much here you can do yeah. he's also the guy the first day you came in asked what your brand plan was for the next three years and you said you didn't have one it's it was so the, and i started getting a lot of um i, I ended up basically doing sonic 24 7 yeah, I, I sort of came in in the evenings and did Sonic Rex stuff. Then my weekend was Sonic Rex stuff, and then my days were Sega and Sonic stuff. And the same, honestly, the same people that would get angry and upset with me for mm. doing SW and being a fan. Well, that was that. Was, yeah, the, the, the people were so people upset about me being a fan and and speaking for for Sonic. But in actuality, I was one of four people in the company that could make an official statement without doing anything, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. The, the head of the head of brand could do it. The head of marketing could do it. Um, the uh, CEO could do it. And me. That's but crazy. there was just this thing where I, it, it, it continued to continue to continue. And at the same time as this, that I would come through the fact, there were other people that weren't happy with the fact that I hadn't somehow paid my dues, that I hadn't come through from Q, that I hadn't come through from QA. That's I find that very so interesting. The people underneath were upset that I'd not come through via QA. The people above were upset was that I was a fan at all because that was somehow a negative. So you would say for some people that the the groundwork that you've done, so to say, in terms of Sonic Rex, etc., and all the things in that 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 wasn't acknowledged as working your way up in a different way. Um, there no, wasn't, no. They, they, it, no, no. It, 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 it was almost just a fan who came out it of was, nowhere. It was not a thing. It was, it was very much a dismissive hand wave. Well, you did that, so what? I mean, I'm also the guy that's, you know, every week putting around a report saying how much coverage his work has generated, which is completely outdoing the numbers of the actual marketing department for print. Um, I'm the guy who's got the fans to be happy. Um, this is sounding very poor me, I know, but it it it's really unfair. was that at the time, and it's it's strange. S- Summer of Sonic, yes. Summer of Sonic. What do you think my professional credit for Summer of Sonic is? I'm trying to think if you had one. Z- yeah, no zero. <laughs> that was like, that was things like did, and now, but yeah, you zero. Um, it's it's very much deemed as I've not been ever involved in it. Um, from Sega's point of view, Despite, like, I was only the only person working on it <laughs> for Sega for years and years and years. Um, Sega, Sonic, 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 Sonic really made me hated a lot of people. One of the things that was cut out of that history of Sonic, Sonic was how um, you know I had to pretty much go around and beg for the money. Now I, I was doing this. All- lot of stuff including like walking people's dogs and looking after people's babies when they were in the office and um trying to do deals doing people's work for them basically there was a number of games that i wasn't working on where i wrote the marketing plan for various people so they didn't have to do it See, um, obviously my uh, experience people, yeah i was gonna say my yeah. experience with summer of sonic is obviously i was involved in the team but obviously not at the, the level that you were um, but I do recall in many conversations about like we're trying to do this, but we're trying to, and it was I always found it interesting that you are in terms of out of everyone in that room, you were the Sega person in terms of you are Sega. You're the only person repping. You're officially repping. You are Sega in terms of the group of people. Everyone else isn't that. Isn't that they're they're just you know enthusiasts if you will. Um, and the person from Sega was always like, we're try- yeah, we wanted this, but I'm just trying my hardest to convince people that it's that it's worth the investment was, oh, we need this money and that, it always blew my mind that like the sega guy is struggling to convince sega that this thing is, is worth the money 
or worth uh, any money. Summer of, Summer of Sonic success really didn't go down well. Summer of Sonic, the first two Summer of Sonics um, succeeded despite Sega. <laughs> Um, and why, it was a was great it, advertisement. It was a great advertisement for everything that was going on. Did the, why um, did it? Was it something that they felt reflected badly on them, or was it just um, the fact they felt like they missed was, out on I missed out on an opportunity themselves? Oh, 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 I gave I gave so many opportunities for to get please get involved, please get involved. You know, if you've, you've got a little game, a little Sega game, it's got no budget. Yeah. You know, let me let let me take it there. You've got a whole bunch of infused Sega people who will go out and then say about it if you just give them the, the opportunity to do so. It was no, but it because it was this marketing success that was for a lot of people. I mean, not everybody there, but that there was people like um, uh, Stephen McGarry, who's uh, who's great and was always very supportive. But there was certainly other people there that when the next year Summer Sonic came around, it was like. Ugh, you're doing this again? I thought you've already done one. That's and my it that's my just like, thing. It, it's just like you're you're going against that. And and again, you're in that position where I'm having to tell the community guys no about stuff. And you were there. Yeah. You you probably remember this. When we were having like the various you know the, the chats in the, the forums and you know the, the online chats and what have you when saying like can you confirm this or can you tell us about this or tell us what game is going to be this i was like, I'm just going no i can't it's you know it's under under wraps and everyone getting really angry at me because i couldn't <laughs> because i wouldn't say anything it was yeah. like guys it's my job yeah you can't know it's like I, I want you guys to have nda so i can tell you but they don't trust you and then th- that somehow translated into well you're not telling us so we can't trust you and it's like oh my god it, that what, leads what me doing? into um, another thought that I had, which was we discussed how your time uh, uh, be by being a fan and coming from the background that you did uh, caused these issues in your employment there um, mm. with certain people and stuff. Um, yeah. Then I, I should point out that there was an awful lot of very very happy days. Yes. There. It wasn't. And, oh, and getting and... to do really amazing things um, that and experiences that I'll never forget. But and I feel like, and I think a lot of the things you've described today sound like anyway. Like it, it just it comes out of doing it, again. It's it having a fan involvement um, at a professional level. That was something that was relatively new. So oh. it was just like the ironing out. Yeah. Of how does this dynamic work? How do you, you know? I think that's evolved a lot since then. Yeah, but then somebody, it makes... somebody wrote an article about it. Somebody actually, I mean, from another place entirely, nothing to do with the Sonic or Sega community at all. And somebody at the end of my tenure wrote a really, you know, uh, really engaging, very thought provoking article about community people that are in that are in uh, the video game industry professionally. Mm. And how that's ba- the balance of being a fan versus and 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 having that um, enthusiasm versus the realities of video gaming. Yeah. And they one of the people I think it was like three people I focused on. One of them was me. And I think the summary of it was they they didn't know how I'd yeah. done this. Do um, you, if you have that side of it, and you mentioned uh, obviously like the us. Uh, doing Summer of Sonics and such and being like, why won't you tell us this, that and the other? And it's because well, I, I physically can't. Um, do you... I so wanted to, guys. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel that... But the, So you have that one side of it, which was like this learning this new way of doing things in, in a professional manner and the, the you know challenges that provided. But then on the fan side of things, was there any other point... I, I hope you can be as honest as you can. At any point on the fan side of it, with your friends, that you felt like actually my time working in this professional manner on this subject that we're all fans of ca- caused a disconnect between you and you know these these peers you had in the community because then you became this person who, like you said, wouldn't tell things and was being awkward because because was... you were, because you were you were, that was your employment that you it was beyond your control. Did did you ever feel that? Um. I don't know, you know, it was. There were times where uh, there, there were times where it was all of a case of. Uh, there, there are various points where it was you know, very obvious that 
it just wasn't working mm. let's say um there there are points when you know the community had you know i mean with any community they will have issues with them mm. and there were times when i honestly didn't understand the, i don't want to say the point of view but it, it didn't kind of gel with the response um in terms of you know wondering when i was actually kind of done with sonic it was i think that it was it was actually i wasn't done with sonic but it was time to it was time to move on yeah um professionally mm-hmm. because i really feared getting pigeonholed and typecast if you will as the sonic guy and there was evidence to suggest that that was starting to occur. And I was also aware that the economy was changing. So this is like 2010 yeah. to 2011. And if it started to go down and we're starting to lose people in the team. And I'm there because Sonic is great. But at the end of the day, it came to the point where I needed to sort of spread my wings a bit more. And I asked, OK, this will upset you. OK. <laughs> I don't know if I've told this story before. Okay, but so lots and lots of people were getting promoted. There was no, you know, head of um, Sega committee. There was no senior person because that was Martin, and Martin was then let go. Yeah. Um. At which point I was expected to take over that job, and then by the by the end I was basically doing three people's jobs and monitoring somebody else. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to start moving up myself because i because like i could see me standing still yes and that and i want to be know that i'm challenging one of the things that drives me is you know you're challenging yourself you're, you're delivering stuff you're improving stuff and and moved on and there was signs that i kind of got what i came in initially for was to you know help say understand the fans and when you've got you know azuka going yes we can go and poll the fans about their favorite levels and we'll do that for sonic generations and we'll forget the plan that we were going to do for the levels for that yeah. because the, because you're right and it should be their decision even though we can't say anything that was the sign that i've kind of got that goal yeah so i want to make myself more accessible i want to make myself more you know varied i want to make myself you know give myself a path a career path because there's nowhere to go yeah, I think that's there's nowhere natural. above me. Yeah, there's nowhere above me. There's arguably nowhere below me because the floor's being taken away from underneath me. Um, and I asked um, a very senior person in the marketing team at Sega. I basically took them aside one day mm-hmm. and I said, "Look, I'm not asking to be promoted or anything. Yeah, but there comes a point in, but you know, there comes a point in time where you know everyone else is you know, moving up." I said, you yourself have moved up. I would like to start the process to to get to a point where I can move up. So I said, I don't know what that would be. I don't know if that would be like um, an assistant brand manager or assistant marketing manager or somewhere that's basically like a diagonal, yeah. you know, as opposed to anything. Because, you know, I, I want to do stuff. I've got a wife. I'm looking for maybe start a family. I want yeah. to do a bunch of other stuff. And... You know, I, I think I've been here and proven myself enough that. So, what do I have to do to be to basically start that process? What do I need to learn? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to sit with? Which is, I think, a very reasonable question. Yeah, I think that's a natural you know, question. I'm, yeah, you know, it's just like you know, I want to be better. I want to be better for you guys. Uh, that person laughed at me Shut up. Uh, to my face and then said, uh, uh, and then said, "Oh God, you're serious." That- what? No. <laughs> um, and then, then they, in so many words, basically said no. And then they, they, again, basically, in so many words, said someone like you. This is this boy, is as good as it gets. Someone like you um, is not, you know, uh, that, that's not the path for you. Like, oh, there it's is like that, huh? Well, so basically, I, I, saying there. Are, there is no path for you. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, I also I also happened to stumble in on a meeting between some again senior people uh, discussing about what they would do when they made me redundant, uh, which was nice of them. 
Uh, so it's like, so uh, there's no path up. You're going to make me redundant at some point, probably straight after the 20th anniversary stuff, because then my use to you is over. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was is going to be a case of uh, okay, so I'm going to start looking for somewhere else to work. Great example of that bipolarness. The second somebody found out that I was doing interviews at places, they were furious. Really? Uh, it's just like. Yeah, and when I left, um, when it was agreed that, you know, it's like it's time to put an end to all this, one of the things that was up, like, like held against me by saying that I was, was or the, 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 the insinuation that I was being disloyal because I was looking for a, another job when you're going to make me redundant anyway and you won't pay me any more money because you're paying me pretty much the same as I came in on and won't pay any more. That's a classic thing, though. It's a very... Yeah. The loyalty works like, what, one what way. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Be it's loyal like... to us, but we can't really commit very, very to mafia. you. <laughs> it is. I'm, 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 I've used to that work structure in, uh, in previous jobs. So... Chili Dog Mafia? Chili Dog Mafia for the win? <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that's a callback. Um, can, we, can we have happier stuff? Yes. Well... Please? Oh, I was going to say... Um, well, it does lead to a happier topic in my mind. But then the, right. the other thing I want to discuss is the end of Sonic Because right? I want because oh, um, a sort of thing happened, and then of course it transitioned to where you are now, which is the last minute continue. So I just which no one cares about, but never mind. I don't think that's true. I, I, I see on some of your numbers, you do okay. Um, I really don't. <laughs> but I really and that leads to another conversation. But before we move into that, I just want to say, like, so was Sonic Rex closing? Was there always a plan of like, we're going to close Sonic Rex and we're going to move into this? Or was no. there a point where you're like, I'm just going to close this? Never. Uh, there's I've, never I've a plan done. for that. There's never a plan for that. Um, What happened was... <laughs> oh, how, how how much should I go into this? Um, So there, there was that part of that era. We had, uh, we had Transform came out. Mm-hmm. And God bless you, Sumo Digital, for putting me back in the credits for that. Because I got taken out. So, and Sumo Digital wouldn't have any of it and put me back in. Good. That's why I'm under the special thanks. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's, I mean, it was not. It was nice that that became a thing, and you know, it was. So I had that. And then Lost World came along, and I was really excited for Lost World because Lost World was the first game I knew nothing about mm. as a fan. So I was excited for that going on, but we had uh, my my kind of love for it had gone at that point and i i made a comment to double cross a while ago and about about it which i think is pretty telling just like that i i loved this thing and it didn't love me right in any way shape or form. so we had that uh, we had sonic sonic 2011 which i loved i still think it is the best summer of sonic i know the others don't agree but i i think it is <laughs> um so I was like Twitter, and it was a lovely send off for for me personally. It was a nice little you know, farewell. I was still going to be around. I'd done various articles saying that I'd still be around, but I'd already prior to that in 2010 said that 2011 would probably be my last one, and that was again a response to um, Sega basically um, not being happy with Summer of Sonic, <laughs> and Summer of Sonic was absolutely hamstringing me so i kind of had to get into a point where to 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 force others to get involved in it and to you know get myself in a position personally where i wasn't you know being seen being seen negatively because which is absolutely mind-boggling isn't it there's this massive humongous success international fan convention and it's seen as a detriment it's madness. by some people because it's a success I, anyway Luckily, later years, like I said, 10, 11, it really got into its own in terms of you know, people getting involved. And Nintendo, by the way, Nintendo turning up at 2010, causing all the problems that they did, but <laughs> actually going, we're filming for the Wii channel. Yes, <laughs> I remember. I remember <laughs> Summer that. of Sonic. Um, that was, I think, the one where they just suddenly went, oh, <laughs> okay. So we have Nintendo to thank for a lot of stuff. Um, they, so 2011 was great, and it was great great send off and i was really happy i was in a really good place my life was not in a very good place at all by the end of 2011 and then sega threatened to sue me right okay 
I reckon that's a good time to take a quick break before we continue that conversation. Hi, I'm Ruth Corden. And I'm Ange Corden. And we are here to tell you about our fantastic podcast, Finding the Funny. Ange and I are sisters, and we get together every week. And what do we do, Ange? Well, we just chat a little yeah. rubbish, really, mate, don't we? There's a lot of banter. Mm. There's a lot of taking the mick out of each there other. Is. We just like to look at life and find the funny. And most importantly, we chat to you, our listeners. So come and join us and listen to Finding the Funny. There's a new episode every Wednesday, 8pm, and we would love it if you joined our crew. Okay, so you're being sued. Continue. This came out of complete left field. So I, I was going through. So I'm personally at my absolute lowest ebb. Um, I'm going through divorce. Yes. Which you know is not good for anybody. No. I've had to move into recommend. this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> high five, fella. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Renisa, you survivors, he killed you. <laughs> um, but I've, you know, I've, I've left the house, which I absolutely loved. Mm. Um, with uh, living there with the people, you know, with my with my then wife and uh, Blake Draco, Dusk nowadays. And we'd had summer, so like everyone was really happy with it and good and what have you. And then suddenly out of the, and I, I, but um, health wise, not doing well. I've got the the debilitating head thing that i picked up as a happy 25th birthday present when somebody started uh, a tap ball somebody attacked me basically and started using my head as a football which is why in later years i looked quite disheveled um was because of the eternal or literally everyday ongoing pain from uh, cluster headaches i so was, I, was, I was really bad place with that because it was kind of at its, its peak and it was bothering me day and night and I was in the. I moved into the spare bedroom of an ex-girlfriend until such times I could sort of get myself on track again because the economy had collapsed and there's no jobs anymore and I've got no money and so I'm living here. And I just randomly got in the post a letter from a lawyer saying, um, "Yes, yeah, so, uh, this uh, Sega are going to sue. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to sue you unless." Unless you would agree to these terms and you know what have you, and I'm like, what? That would. What, what, why? What, like what? And it was such. A... We've gone to a sad thing again. Um, <laughs> but I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but this is the the truth behind the curtains. That was kind of a sad time. Um, but what happened was transformed. The All Stars Racing transformed. There was a. Um, thing that went out a, tra- a trailer that went out um just just gen- generally advertising and back in the day that's entirely your fault actually <laughs> <laughs> back in the day because we put we put trailers on our channels didn't we we put and you there's sw yeah. had a good youtube channel with a decent following yeah and you watermarked your stuff i did and i never did and i thought you know it'd be nice if we watermarked that one so i did it and I put up the because I, 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 I saw it and I immediately went on the Sega press fault, downloaded it, got it, watermarked it, and put it up, and didn't mm. think anything else about it. And um, yeah, that's seems because fine. you know what have you, whatever. Yeah. What I didn't then. know was yeah. that those guys, the press fault people, had made a mistake and they put up the wrong trailer. Oh, so we had a situation where. I got in, I, I literally was like the first person in, grabbed it before they took it down and then placed it. The trailer that I had mentioned the fact that it was coming to DS. Ah. I did not see this. It, it's not like it was a massive secret. Yeah. Everybody knew it was coming to DS. Everybody knew it was coming to DS. Was, we were literally waiting for E3 to roll around. So this will give you an idea again of time when mm. this was. E3 to roll around so it could be announced. Okay. Didn't... So, you know, lo and behold, I get a message late at night from somebody. Um, this is after I've already taken the trailer down because there was an error in the rendering and I was literally in the process of redoing it. Right. Saying, did you know you've revealed that it's coming out on DS? And the, the honest answer is no, I did not know. And, and again, I, was mortif- I was mortified. 
It's another Buy example it. of Sega leaking stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh no. This 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 was my fault um, entirely. Apparently. Um, so you know, I ended up um, having a conversation with this, and I was like, no. And they pointed me to Sonic Stadium, and also Retro, and also TSSZ where there are massive articles about it that are being picked up by here, everyone under the sun, yeah. which has got, you know, all oh, which said, oh, they've taken down the trailer, but we've got a print screen of this. Yes, we've got a print screen of this end slate with the Sonic Rex logo in the corner, oh, watermarked. No. And, and Sumo did not blame me at all, because I explained the situation and everything was fine. Um, but I'm like, uh, and everyone's was, and Sega, I, I rang Sega as soon as I found out. I ran Sega, left a message on the phone of some people that I trusted, and just went, "Look, you'll know this has happened. I didn't know this. This is this is you know I, I got to the press sport did this 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 this. I'm absolutely mortified about it. I can you know I can go through with you what happened. Yeah, you know, and you can look look at the time indexes or whatever in the website for you know, for the press box, so you can see what this is and you can check what it is, and so it never happens again. Let me know if there's anything I can do, etc. Yeah. So I reached out to Sega like twice and sent it me, and I never got a call back. So I thought, huh? Um, obviously, that was an E3 announcement. Yes, not much of one, but it's an E3 it's, <laughs> announcement. It was something. Uh, so we've got we had that, and the irony was that. SW literally got no benefit out of that. Everybody else got all the traffic. I say it, but you had, you had taken it, it down. So. We, we didn't even know it had happened, you know? And the trade is down, so I'm not getting anything from that. Um, Sega, it turns out, thought that I had that I had deliberately leaked the knowledge that it had that it was going on DS. And the, my initial thought when I found that out was I think I know m bigger and better secrets than the game that's that everyone knows is coming out on DS is coming out on DS. Yeah, this multi-format game is coming. Yeah, out this multi-format, multi-platform game is is also it's coming to like PSP. Was did it come out on PSP? Uh, Vita. You get a Vita. Yeah, it's also coming out on that. The one thing that's missing is DS, and it's like we know it's coming out on DS because they've been doing yeah, really focusing on DS game. Through habit, we know. Um, <laughs> and I'm also the person. I'm also the one person that's reported this that's got no benefit out of it. So clearly, I've gone out for myself and and deliberately leave this. So they um, implied you're doing it for a more spite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so the, the, let the letter had said that I had hacked the press vault. I don't remember it being particularly hard to get into. Yeah, I, I hacked the press vault, you know, with my login and password that I'd had for the previous six years. <laughs> uh, I went in and downloaded something that was up there for anybody to download and put it up. Um, and that was what they were, they were suggesting I had done. But the, the thing that was the kicker was that, again, this happened in pre-E3. I got this letter after Summer of Sonic 2011 was done. A nice nail in the... But it was quite well known that I wasn't in a good place yeah. after that. So they waited until I had done the Summer of Sonic stuff for 2011. Uh, and then they took that happiness away from me. But so, you got through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we got through it. Um, but there was nothing... But unsurprisingly, my love for Sonic had somewhat taken a rather massive hammering. And... Uh, so, so there was nothing coming out for Sonic at the time, and it was time to put it to bed. And LMC was going to be a professional thing. I was actually going to do... LMC was going to be the column of a lifestyle magazine um, for just game stuff. It was going to be yeah. part of a lifestyle magazine that was done by a premiership footballer. Okay. And I went to you know a launch party for this thing um, <laughs> that was all about you know living the life and stuff. And there was going to be this magazine of which last minute continue was going to be the thing which is why like, the early early stuff was like some blogs and stuff yeah uh, content um but that then they then disappeared one day and then did start not responding why, to my emails just... I was like oh okay so um i basically made I made sonic rex as a what if we weren't restrained by sonic which i feel has from my point of view done wonders for you in terms of it's it just nice. feels like, yeah, it just feels like it's 
And I feel like a lot of Sonic creators, myself included, which is why I don't actively do like the video stuff I used to do and that no. you know the channels being passed on. It's just I got to a point where I was like, I'm just not jaded as such for me, but I was just like, I've done everything I feel I can do, and I, yeah. I, if I continue to do this, it's because I'm in this sort of machine that's turning all the cogs. But I'm not passionate or interested in what I'm no. outputting. Whereas I feel there like now the content you're there. creating, yeah, and the content you're creating now is because you are not held by this one franchise no. as good as it's been, and you know we both, well, I, I you know we still have, it will always have an impact on us. But like you can say, All right, this game takes this, this actually interests me. This this thing here, I'm gonna go and yeah do that, and there's and so you can actually be led by what drives you rather than <laughs> what shackles you yeah absolutely i mean but that was reflected across the other stuff as well i mean whilst I mean, sonic rex became a once in a blue moon thing as a comic um but there was the aspect of you know radio redux became all music and not saying yeah. sonic um and, t- and then it ended up you know coming to an end and the since obviously restarted as, a, as an occasional item on on radio sega but you've also got, you know, that the, obviously the Let's Plays and the video content are not mm-hmm. that, not Sega Sonic, which again has upset people. Um, but it's where it needs to be for for me. And I'm think- surprised it's where it needs to be for me. And we've, we've even got the like the the LMC comic now, which is again Sonic Rex without the shuff, without the shackles. I'm happy to pat our own egos we did a reason we did quite a good job at it um and i think we got there the was re- a time when sw was pulling in ridiculous numbers but yeah, I'm, as like, you say, i'm far happier doing lmc in relative and anonymity than i was doing sw you know being you know, arguably successful and it's, if you yeah. and uh, no, that just makes me happy because it means that the content you create is better, in my opinion, yeah. and it's yeah, like, and that's why I want to continue doing this podcast. I am, yeah, and not other things. Have you, because... have you been? Have you listened to any of the more recent radio releases? Because they are light years ahead. Uh, if you get a chance, and just anybody who's like old, old, old bees like me and me and Jamie here, <laughs> there's one which is was done for Radio Sega's Opposite Day last year. There's actually an Opposite Week coming up again. Um, very very soon i think um which was like christ on infinite podcasts and it was the the whole joke for opposite week was that, that because i wasn't part of radio saying i didn't really have anybody to do and in terms of like another show so the, the entire show was just me trying to find other avenues where i could like do the show yeah. so i try and do sonic hour and then like start going for it, like some of it's like really dated badly <laughs> Um, I try and do Turbo Drive Live, but Turbo won't have any of it. I try to do like various other bits, like Mot the Geek and, and things like oh. that, and, like other obscure shows yeah. from from the past, and just be sort of like, well, no, I can't do that because I was in it, or I can't do that because it's not there. Um, um, the, the, the highlight being, by the way, uh, God Donny, <laughs> um, when we actually do uh, Opinion Zone briefly. <laughs> but uh, the, the joke being that now Donnie is the only one that can talk and has like ascended. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> All powerfulness. Um, it, but it, but it's so, but that is so good, and that's kind of what I wanted to do initially. It just takes a, so long to to get round to things nowadays, unfortunately. We'll round off with two things that I want to hear. Yeah, which is one for for people who are newer in like uh, like up-and-coming creators and who have barely even begun if you from your <laughs> vast experience what would be a leading piece of advice that they should take with them as they start their journey in the internet community if you want to be successful within it if it will be a success <laughs> in, in this community of of ours look for a gap look for something that people aren't doing look for something that people aren't doing that you could get behind and infused with that you have ideas don't just just steam in and just start start doing stuff have a little thought about it first have a think about what you could do is it sustainable and once you've done that think about whether or not it will make you happy yeah. you know you're not you're not here to make success um of, of yourself or what have you 
uh, arguably you're probably actually going to be spotted quicker because I, I couldn't agree more because it's obvious you know you know that you from that point of view because then you are clearly doing it for the love of what have you and you become more obvious <laughs> this is not to say that though those first the group of people are you know in any way fake or anything but there is the character versus the person mm -hmm. and people latch onto the people a lot quicker than um than the character the character will have a, a bigger shelf or a shorter shelf life and a bigger you know spike in terms of in engagement but the person you'll end up if you they hook onto the person you'll end up having more successful long-lasting meaningful friendships and relationships yeah. outside and secondly in your time as as part of the sonic community if you i mean this might be difficult but if you could give me like just a highlight like that the one moment that you'd be like this is this is a moment that could only have happened because i was part of the sonic community and i will cherish okay i would say um as right the the thing that i the thing that i cherish the most um i'm not gonna say a personal but i'm gonna say I'm gonna, from the from a I mean, there are others which are which are which are very personal, but from a professional point of view, as as well as personal, I will say that the thing that um, always sticks in my mind is at SummerSlate 2011, and Izuka San mm. spotted me in like like the stairwell behind the stage, uh, and he stopped me and he wanted to talk to me, um, which was great because again Sega had this thing about. Um, me not contacting Sonic Team. There was there was honestly, there was trouble once because June was my friend. I got a dressing down because June was my friend, and I'd committed some sort of heinous crime of having this man be my friend. Mm -hmm. um, but so so the whole interaction that SOA had SOE didn't have because it was just like no, you're not allowed. So the fact that Izuka Zan wanted to speak to me and made a point of stopping me to do so was you know in itself quite a thing because it was like oh okay you do know actually who i am and what i do and he said some comments along the lines which indicated he did yeah which again is nice because it's nice to know that you know, someone's based someone's paying attention to what you're trying to do and we had a short conversation um and the gist of it was that uh he's speaking for nakasan as well which was great, and that he said that he loved it. He loved Summer of Sonic. Oh, man. He loved being there. He was actually kind of sad that he he and Naxan couldn't be out among the people. You remember the, the, the night before when we had like the practice session and, and Nakasan and uh, yes. Azuka-san came in mm -hmm. and started like taking photos of stuff. Yes. Um, and just like hanging out. Yes. Um, they, 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 like, they made a, like a massive beeline for the merchandise cabinet <laughs> and started talking about all the stuff there. And it was great. And me and T-Bird were like really, like really happy because it was like, it's our stuff. And they, <laughs> they just want to see it. But he said that they wanted to be out there more it, because they because they had to be justified with all the media and stuff and what have you they were kind of out there for the like a little bit and then it was like signings and other stuff and they said they, they, they really liked being out among the fans chatting to the fans signing stuff and enjoying the atmosphere you know uh with with them and you could tell it meant something to him you could tell that it had uh, you know, because they were a little bit, you know, wary beforehand, but they they now understood. Uh, and Izuka understood what the, the that that again go back to that word again, passion, the passion of the Sonic fans, and how important it was. And he could see how many people were actually behind the scenes of Summer of Sonic. All these people over the years that have yeah. done, you know, that have always been a part of the team, like yourself. Like Vija and Earthheart and you know the Radio Sega guys and Lewis yeah. and uh, just all those guys who just who just worked unceasingly hard and, and, and B Man. There's so many people that I wish I could sort of convey. And you could see it in his eyes. You could see it in his eyes. The excitement of being there. And it was a testament to the hard work of everybody. 
But it and it just went to show that what we did with you know a you know, a fraction of the budget that Boom had, and we put on this goddamn amazing show. So that that meant an awful, awful lot to me because that was just like I thought the the Facebook poll thing and actually him agreeing to that was like yes, this is it. I've done it now. That because it was just so against everything that was it that was the point it's like ah i can go i can go now this is it's it's done i'm happy i don't think and, you could have picked it. uh i don't think you could have picked a more happy <laughs> no that i brings, was that brings me joy yeah. um thank you so much for spending this time uh oh it's it, it's been a through the highs it's been, and some the of the stuff has been sad stuff <laughs> I I I hell stuff, but that's I really that's enjoyed it. Honest I think truth. It shows. Yeah, I think it builds a very uh, honest uh, picture of things. I think, but it also shows you know lessons we've learned and the fact that yeah, I think it's just there's just so much stuff in the community that is just like there's just so much context and things and it's so rich. And I love hearing mm. about it, and um, and yeah. it's one of those things that we have lost over the years. I think there's a lot of a lot of it is, is context of the time and the decisions, and it pleases me. Honest, honest, honest to God, hand on heart, it pleases me no end to see where Sega and Sonic are now yeah. in terms of their understanding of everything and their role within the community. Do I agree with everything that they do? No, but. It, it's such a different atmosphere. You can tell at that company than where it was, and the community are kind. Of, it, it's the norm for those for those young kids now in the community. It's, this is normal, and it's exactly what it should have been all along. Again, thank you, Kevin, so much for um, <laughs> taking time to listen to this. It's um, been it's been an absolute treat talking to you as always, Jenny. So, that was Kevin Eva, and can I just say thank you so much to Kevin Eva for spending the time to talk to me and go through everything right from the beginning. Uh, he has had, had, had such an interesting career, um, whether it be uh, professionally or within the online fandom, and I'm so glad he took the time to go through it all, even the hard times as well as the good times. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Kevin. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to check out Kevin and what he does, then you can go to his website, lastminutecontinue.com, um, and you can also find him on Twitter, at lastminutecontinue, Twitch, lastminutecontinue, YouTube, guess, guess, that's right, it's lastminutecontinue, um, but he has also got a personal account as well, if you wanted to just say hi, um, that's the Kevin Eva, E-V-A, so uh, you can always check out his app there, um, it's not a private account, I think, so <laughs> we don't mind me sharing that. But um, yeah, do check him out. Check out what he does. Uh, check out Radio Redux as well. Radio Redux, R-E-D-U-X. Uh, yeah, I think I, I haven't got much more else to say. I hope you like the chat. I hope you liked us discussing, um, you know, the behind the scenes and, you know, times of, times of old. Well, old in terms of internet relevancy anyway. So if you want to hear more, do let me know. My at is at Opinion Zone Show. Opinion Zone Show. All one word on Twitter. Give us a follow. And if you're listening on any of the podcast apps, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, the other ones, if they have a rating system, please give us five stars. We would love to have a review as well. But even if you just rate us five stars, you don't understand how much it is helps and um, the most recent reviews you we have been getting are from ireland so thank you to everyone in ireland who's been listening and also thank you to everyone who's listening in brazil because we've been charting really high there we're getting a lot of um traffic from brazil so hello to everyone listening over there anyway guys i'm gonna peace out for the day now thanks for listening to the opinion zone we will be back soon with more interviews chat and shenanigans until then bye bye
Fixing a small wind farm to your roof is one change you could make to be more sustainable. Fixing a broken chair instead of buying a new one is another change you could make to be more sustainable. One's hard, one's not so hard, but both help. Change a bit for good. IKEA, the wonderful everyday.